No, 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 no. I got the tank. No, 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 don't. Come on, back. Do you want to explain what you're doing? <laughs> I forgot to pack deodorant, and that's the single most important thing you have to pack and bring to a reptile show, guys. Any kind of show? Any kind of show or con. So we went out and bought deodorants, but you guys don't want to watch me put on deodorant, so let me just do this. Was, was that supposed to do something? Oh, are we still here? Yeah. Oh, well, that was... Let me try again. Nope. 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 God, I hate turning 30. This didn't happen before when I was in the, my 20s. <sighs> oh! It worked that time. Yay, Perfect. You got it. Okay, we're here. So we are at the Tinley Park NARBC, North American Reptile Breeders Conference. It is our favorite reptile show to go to in the entire world. We're not vending this show, we're just enjoying it as shoppers. So we are gonna pick up some reptiles, and this is like the biggest reptile expo in the US, I'm pretty sure nowadays. So this is the one show we don't need to get any product though. Yeah, it's gonna be weird. We don't need products for our store because we ordered everything. Yeah, reptile ahead of time. basics sent us something just recently. Yep. Uh, we bought BioDude uh, stuff Bio already. BioDude stuff was shipped to us recently. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Pangea doesn't do the show stuff anymore, so... I don't know I don't know if we need any products. We might not. Maybe we'll just get a lot of reptiles at this show, because we, we still have a rental van. Also, so, is that yours? That drink? Yeah. Yes. It's, <laughs> it is my drink, Are you drink, trying yes. to hide your drink? No, of course <laughs> not. Yes, that is my drink. And this is a leopard gecko that we're bringing to find a new home. This is prosciutto, a leopard gecko. Going to a new home with Dustin today. Awesome. I have a corn snake in my backpack also getting adapted and tomorrow we have a bunch of other reptiles getting adapted yes. too so i think we're gonna jump in and see what the show is like today is the setup day so we get to look at things that are set up all right so what are we looking for at this show today or this weekend we not really just today right we need some snakes for our retail store we could use some colubrids like corns kings milks stuff like that personally i think we should add another female mossy leaf-tailed gecko to the zoo yep and i want more hog noses oh okay yep those are my three goals wholesale animals mossy leaf-tailed gecko and all the hogs okay I'm here with Jeff from Gateway City Reptiles, who specializes in a, an amazing lizard that we've been seeing recently, but I know nothing about the black dragon. Now, Jeff, all I know about these is, I think they're a type of monitor? They are a water monitor, that's correct. They are? Yes. Okay, okay. Um, how big do they get? What's their care like? Well, they're, the uh, babies we keep in little three-foot cages on cypress mulch. Um, they do need a hot spot like okay. all lizards, so we have about 110 plus on the hot spot. Oh, wow. Cool, cool end of 80. They like uh, it hot. They, well, they, they, they like to get right underneath there, and then okay. they'll, they'll move off like any other reptile. They'll grab the heat and then they'll move away as they need to. Okay. Adults do need sizable enclosures. Like the pair that produce these um, is in a 14 foot cage. Oh my gosh. Eight wow. foot tall, six foot deep, water feature. You don't have to have a feature, but they love water, so. Okay. Um, do they they get, I mean, with tail, probably like seven, eight feet then? They would easily, yeah. So okay. I would say the adult's body-wise without the tail is probably in the three-foot range, but we're talking okay. this thick. Um, and then the tail, as we can see, is considerably longer, so six, seven foot. That's insane. Yeah. I mean, and they're gorgeous, too. Do they stay this jet black color their entire life? They do, but they can also come out with a little bit of pattern. So if they're black like this, they're going to be jet black. Oh, really? If so it's... Some of them, like, we'll take a look at later. They you can actually see some of the pattern in the tail barely right okay. there, but some of them it's more apparent. Wow. And now, it, this isn't like a color morph of a water monitor of sorts. This is a, an, its own species, this is, right? This is, it is, but it's a, it's a, actually a recessive gene. Oh, it is a color morph? Yes. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. So I actually started with a, a black female and a het male. Okay. And then after three years of breeding them, I finally raised up one of these babies that have a male that's black, so now I do black-to-black -black breeding on them constantly. These are just gorgeous, though. Okay, what's their diet like? First of all, they'll eat anything. Really? Oh, fish, they're monitors, chicken, yeah. whatever. We do mainly rodents. Okay. We do fish. We do okay. chicken. So we do like to mix it up a bit. Oh, they're just little garbage disposals. Yeah, and these little babies, we start them on uh, crickets, some will eat dubia, and then we do pinky mice. We just put them in a bowl, frozen thought, when they'll feed live. Yep. And then they just go eat them out of a bowl like a dog or a cat eating food from their bowl. It's oh. crazy. Yeah. 
If you had to label them as, as far as lizards, actually as far as monitors go, a beginner, intermediate, or advanced species of monitor, what would you put them at? I would say, I would, I'm only going to say medium because of the cage requirements. The size? You need size. Yeah. But I mean, otherwise they're very durable. Really? Super hardy animals. Yeah. Well, they are gorgeous. Thank you so much oh, for welcome. teaching us about them and thank you for your time. You bet. If people want to learn more about your black dragons, where can they go? They can go to Gateway City Reptile. Awesome. Definitely check out Jeff's Black Dragons. Oh no. We've got five minutes until the show opens. Is it only five? Yeah, it's almost 10 o'clock and we have our meet and greet at 10. Yep. And then with the dress theme, I have to change, I have to change into the dress theme. become your dress theme. Yeah. <gasps> Perfect. There you go. Okay, I'm right in now, costume. Emily Roberts of yes, Snake Discovery. Yes, dress theme for this show is to dress as Ed or Emily. Yep. And I'm really curious to see how people interpret that challenge. Yeah. So we're gonna go, I guess, hide in the show and see how we'll long see it how takes. See how well we can hide. Yes, see how long it takes for people to find the real Ed and Emily. I'm gonna be Emily. interested if anybody actually has a Charizard belt buckle. Me too, yeah, how many ponytails? I yeah. purposely did ponytail, so we'll, we'll see what happens. All right, it is 10 o'clock, the show has started, and so has our meet and greet. And Audrey here is first in line. Are you dressed as me? Yes. That is amazing. Here, you are the first to get the limited edition Ed and Emily dressed as hog noses. Pam, there you are. Thank you. Do you keep reptiles? Yes. Really, what do you have? I have a bearded dragon right now, but soon I'm gonna have much more. Oh, are you gonna get stuff at the show here? Because oh. We're camping. oh, that's fair. What yeah. would you get if you could get one more reptile today? A sunburst hognose, Ooh. a lavender hognose, and a couple ball pythons. Those are great choices. Nice. Well, I hope you have fun at the show. And thank you for following us around so you could be first in line. All right, so. You know, dresses Ed or Emily, you, we're gonna see how everybody interprets it in different ways, but you know, traditional Emily would be, I don't know, some sort of snake shirt, a, uh, a jeans, you've got the Charizard belt buckle, of course, ponytail glasses, and Ethan here, I think, has nailed it perfectly. <laughs> oh my gosh, you've got, do you wear glasses normally? Uh, no, but these are my blue light filtering glasses. Oh, perfect, okay, nice. so glass, uh, do you normally have a blonde ponytail? No. <laughs> what? I think you normally, that looks so realistic. I don't know which one's my wife. <laughs> I don't know, it's, it's tough. Yeah. And we have the Charizard belt buckle. I love Charizard the belt buckle. buckle. That's awesome. <laughs> oh my gosh, Ethan 100% did it, like yes. A+. Plus. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Okay, we have another uh, great dress up of Emily, and this one is by Kalia, who has the blonde ponytail. And the, do you normally wear glasses? Um, these are my glasses. Okay, so you wear them daily too, just like me. Oh my gosh! And your shirt is super cool, and I can't believe this. Yeah, the back of the shirt is totally Emily. That's awesome. And not only do you have that shirt, I get one too! I can't believe you Yeah, my it. mom made them. That is so nice of you! Oh my goodness! I will definitely be wearing this. And thank you so much, Kalia. Do you keep reptiles too? Um, yes, we used to have two corn snakes. If you drag it, we have two leopard Oh, nice! Are you gonna get animals at the show too? Um, no, mostly just corn snakes. Well, there's a lot of cool stuff to see. Oh, thank you, Emily. <laughs> Okay, I'm so sorry. There were still, we came back from lunch and we <laughs> met up. Uh, you did another hour of meet and greet after lunch, and there was a long line that had developed at that point. And I'm so sorry to people who we couldn't meet because there's some hog noses we really want to buy today before they sell out. So Ed and I are kind of taking a break from meet, meet and greet because we really want to buy some hog noses. So I'm sorry if you're one of the people we couldn't chat to, but hopefully we can inside the show. All right, it is the end of day one, so now we are at the traditional USARC auction. Yeah, or look at all the silent auction stuff. Yeah, 
yeah, all of this, everything in this room was donated by vendors, and some just non-vendors too, wanted to donate for all the proceeds to go to US Ark tonight. So I mean, there's this brand new ARS rack, a hatchling rack, look how beautiful it is. And apparently this is the first of its kind, totally donated to the auction tonight. So I'm really curious what this is gonna go for. I think yeah. this is the product. We try to film like one product at every auction. I think we should film this one. Or, or Adeline's art that she did in oh. the show. Yeah, she painted that at the show. That was so cool. Yeah. Maybe we'll show both. That's probably gonna go for a lot. Yeah. So yeah, this whole event, this auction is for such a good cause with everything going to US Arc, which if you haven't heard about US Arc, it's an organization for the US that fights for our rights to keep reptiles in captivity as pets. So if you wanna continue keeping things like ball pythons and corn snakes, it's a good idea to support US Arc. Yeah. So. If you wanna know the president, he's right there. Oh yeah, that's Phil. All his glory, right there. <laughs> Oh, he's got his serious face on right yeah, now. Yeah, he does. <laughs> All right. This lady right here. Oh, and she will actually personally put your name on the other side of this painting. She painted it during the show. I actually watched her like a creeper. I'm not gonna lie. So we're gonna start the bid at a hundred dollars. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Bob. Five hundred dollars at Bob. I got six hundred dollars. We're at 4,300 right now in the canoe. We are looking for 4,400. 4,400 we're looking for. 4,400. Like looking for 44 what? Twice? So, 4,300 canoe. Thank you very much. So we got a 120 slot hatchling rack. This is the first one of these made. 120 slot hatchling rack all set up with heat, ready to go. $2,600 show price, but you cannot buy one at the show. We're gonna start that at $1,000. I got 1,000, I need 1,200. I got 12, I got 15, I got 17, 50, I got 20, 50, I got 2,000. I got 3,000 right here, I need 3,200. Tyler's camera is a lot bigger than ours. It's you not the size that matters. <laughs> I don't know. That's a really big I, camera. I feel like Tyler's compensating for something. Oh! Day two. Day two. And Emily is feeling herself up. I shaved. My legs, uh, my legs are so smooth now. Here, feel. Ooh. See, right? Yeah, let's go to the reptile show. Okay. I'm here with Brett from Apex Mountain King Snakes, and he specializes in Arizona Mountain King Snakes, which are gorgeous. So I first gotta ask, what brought you to the Mountain Kings to specialize in? Ah, uh, they're uh, be, well, they are the coolest of the king snakes, and it just actually my uh, first snake I ever caught when I was eight years old in Southern California was a California Mountain King Snake, oh. which is just looks just a lot like these with a oh with a black snout instead of the white snout. And uh, as I got a little older and a little more time on my hands. Uh, I'm spread into all of the mountain kings. I mean, everybody's, you know, familiar with the California kings and Mexican black kings as pets, and they're known for being um, hardy animals and just good pets because they're great eaters, too. How do the mountain kings differ from all of the more familiar species? They're not much harder to keep. They're a little softer. They're probably not as voracious eaters. Okay. Uh, they're more likely to go off feed in the winter, which is a good time to cool them and take a break, get them down under. 60 degrees and give them a little break and they'll come out after a couple months looking looking brilliant. They're a little more docile than a, than a California Are they really? So they're a bit more handleable, would oh, you say? Oh, for sure. Okay. For sure. I mean, they're really pretty, like arguably prettier than Cali Kings, in my opinion. Yeah, they just are, with these yeah. Reds. There's, there's more to look at. Uh, with the Arizona Mountain Kings, there's a lot of morphs. There's a, a hypo E. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, that'll turn the, turn the red pink. Uh, there's Applegate, oh, no. special. 
morph, which is a line bread morph that will reduce the black to sometimes nothing. You won't see anything but red and white. It'll look like a candy cane. Size-wise, are they comparable to Kelly Kings? No, they'll stay smaller. They'll, they are, they're okay. more slender and smaller. Are they uh, rodent eaters in the wild or lizard like gray bandits? They, they love lizards, but they'll okay. you get them. You can get them. You get them on rodents. They'll eat them their whole lives. Uh, okay. Sometimes it takes a little work with some of the young ones. So if you're buying one, get one that's already started. Okay, that, that uh, seems to be the only, I guess, hurdle then to have a good mountain king as a pet is getting one eating. So it is, yeah. And and some of them eat right out of the egg, and some some. Uh, you might have to cool them that winter to get them to eat, and you might have to scent them out with a little lizard or see okay. you know, all sorts of uh, techniques to get them to get huh. them eating. I guess if there's somebody watching who has been considering an Arizona Mountain King, what's one bit of advice you'd give to them? I just get one. You'll love them. They're they're uh, <laughs> just get one. <laughs> yeah, I mean really, there there's there's not a better looking snake. There's not a better pet snake. They're easy to take care of. They don't you, know, you, you can come, keep them a couple degrees cooler than you might. Uh, some of your other colubrids, mm -hmm. and uh, they're very, they're really forgiving. They're awesome snakes, though. So thank you so much for your time here. Thanks for coming by. Um, if people are interested in learning more about your mountain kings, and I mean, you breed bamboo rats, you have Cali kings, you have gray bandits That's and variables. Ca Cali kings. We have uh, uh, South American and North American milk snakes. Uh, we have a good variety of colub colubrids, and yeah. uh, this guy and all his relatives, nice. pretty much. So uh, we're we're on Facebook, Apex Mountain King Snakes. And check us out and uh, website up so shortly. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. <laughs>So we're learning about sexing green tree monitors and Cody here breeds them. So can you explain how to sex these? Yeah, so I mean, first thing you look at for sure, like the most definitive with like adult males like this, you can tell, you could see like protrusion out the side here and oh, here. Of hemipenes? Yep, okay. yep. And so they're really easy to tell. Um, this guy's a little skinny, so it, it's not showing itself too much, but like you see like the crazy amount of like curvature here. Uh, that, that's the easiest way to tell. Okay. And then from this angle too, you see it slopes down. Oh, for sure. Uh, but then with the green specifically, some of the other colors are harder to tell, but with the green specifically, you can really tell based on the difference from the eye to the nostril. Oh. If it's noticeably longer, uh, it's probably a myth. It's okay. one of the easiest ways to tell. So this one is a long enough distance to tell it's a I male? would say for sure this is a male. So if it was Just a... based on the face. And, gotcha. and they have a much bulkier head. It's wider. Okay. Um, obviously, this one's a little bit younger, so it's not as easy to tell. But this guy has, like, a club head <laughs> yeah, compared yeah. to this one. And that's one of the ways to tell, too. Interesting. Thank you so much. Yup. What's your breeder name, by the way? Uh, I go under Versatile Reptiles. Nice. Um, Instagram's at Riser. It's R-Y-Z-R-R. -R. All right, there you go. Check him out, guys, if you want to learn more about tree monitors. I was, uh, I waited till Troy had a bunch of people in front of him and I kind of snuck under the table and stole one. So you stole a puppy? Well, he has two. He didn't need both of them. So this <laughs> one's now mine. Yeah. He's a dog. Oh my gosh. All right, I guess we have a puppy. Yay! <laughs> the last two hours of the show and we haven't bought any animals for our shop yet so now we're gonna scramble and try to buy things from good breeders uh, for our store let's see what we can get done with another Tinley show. That was a bonkers show. It was the coldest show we've ever been to and it was the busiest one inside of the show itself. But we got a lot of great animals and we met amazing fans all weekend long and you guys were so nice. You sent us 
so many things. I try to display like some of it on here so like maybe you can find what you sent us. But there's art in here, there's like keychains, there's, um, look at this! Somebody made us stained glass art. Isn't that beautiful? Here's another one, the chain I have um, disconnected right now. But look at that! These are gorgeous! I can't believe these were like kids who made these with their parents. It was incredible. Somebody sent us a New York package to try to uh, bring us to New York, which I thought was kind of funny. Um, so we have to go to New York now, of course. Somebody gave us homemade honey, which was awesome. And then, Ed, you got to geek out about bees with yep. them. That was kind of cool. There's a ton of artwork in here. Like, look at this. Lavender hog. This is like a cool Pokemon collage. Just so much stuff. There's pop. New pop that we get to try. But I'm going to refrigerate it first, I think. So it'll probably be the best that way. And there's also like these crazy, was it Polish? I po think so. I think it was Polish snacks, yeah. And they, I have a whole bag full of them over here, so we're gonna get to try these too. Got the newest creature care cards expansion pack with like all of the new species she's now like covering. And check this out. This is a snake puppet tie. Like it's an actual tie, but it's also a puppet. Isn't that crazy? Look at that. This is from Oscar, Sean, and Nora in Kentucky. They made this. Like that's, that's, that's crazy. So you guys are way too nice, way, way too nice. I know I say it every time, but we are just blown away by all of your generosity at these shows. So we just enjoy meeting you. You don't have to give us things. We just want to meet you. And we had a blast just doing that. But thank you for all the gifts too. Um, I figure I'll show you what we're going to go home with animal wise. First, the store animals, just really quick, what we got for our store. And then we have some very exciting new reptile additions for our personal collection that we're going to end with. So really quick for our store, we swung by JCP Balls and Boas and they have really nice quality ball pythons and boas. We've got like a clown here, got a banana or coral glow, another one. And they, the nice thing about their ball pythons and boas, and they're not like a sponsor or anything, we just really like them. They're good people. Their snakes eat frozen thawed like right away for us. Their snakes are always good eaters. So this is, I guess, what we're going to add to our uh, inventory up in our retail store. And it's just really nice being able to carry good quality snakes that we can get straight from the breeder and straight from somebody we trust. So that's pretty cool. We got the uh, ball pythons there. We also swung by, and I have his card, DDB corn snakes. And we've got oh, some AML stuff. We've got some snow stuff. Really pretty there. A nice tessera. Okay, wait, debate time. Is it tessera or tessera? Please let us know in the description or in the comments, sorry, because I hear 50-50 and I don't know which one is right. But I've been saying Tessera my whole life, but then I hear people say Tessera and I don't actually know if I'm yeah, right. Yeah, but then there's the people who say Exanthic instead of Azanthic. That's true, but yeah, I really want to know your opinion on Tessera or Tessera. So yeah, maybe it's tomato, tomato, but yeah. Probably. So, yeah, it's got some really nice corn snakes, like really healthy corn snakes. So it was pretty cool. Um, we always do from DDB, so it's great working with them. We also picked up the obligatory free bugs. Had to do the free bugs. Yep. And there's a reason why we did free super worms. It's to feed one of our new friends down on the floor. I'm going to show you soon. We also got some gargoyle geckos, like red line geckos. We picked up a couple of really nice gargs just for our retail store because it seems like people in the Minnesota area are looking for gargs. So we'll be able to have a couple now. Another one of our go-tos is Beasley Exotics. She is wonderful to work with and she does inverts. She does tarantulas primarily. So we picked up a lot of tarantulas from her. Uh, I don't know. Currently, you can just see cups of dirt. Just it's, They're just kind of cups of dirt right now. But I mean, look. we got some cool, like, we got some bird eaters this time. We did, yeah. yeah. To bring back. That's going to be fun for our story. So, like, that one you can see. Yeah, we've got a Darian in here. So, we've got some, some good-sized tarantulas along with some slings. For example, we got this little pumpkin patch. Look at how tiny he is. He's right here. He's so little. Oh, my gosh. And this is a smaller species to begin with, but a baby is so tiny. I love him. Uh, yeah, so we got some really fun tarantulas. Yep. Okay, so that's what we got for our, for our store, for our retail area. And then for ourselves, we got some hog noses. Like, not as many as we wanted to get. Like, there were a couple we saw on Friday, but they weren't set up completely, so we were going to wait until Saturday to buy them, and then by the time we got into the show, they had already sold. Uh, but we did get a few, and we're very excited for them. We got these, by the way, from JMG Reptile. He is amazing and has really good quality hog noses, so we always swing by his table. 
First we have an Arctic Conda female. We have an Arctic male. And so we're gonna actually start getting into the Arctic gene. And basically, I mean, you all know what the Conda gene does. It's a pattern changing morph. Oh, you are sassy. Hello, little girl. Well, Ooh. we didn't get it because it was Arctic either. We got it because Arctic's co-dominant or incomplete dominant. And so is Conda. But that's also... Oh, yeah. Also, <laughs> this one's also d double het sunburst. So yes. albino and sable. So yeah, she's het sable, albino, and she's Arctic, and she's Conda. And Arctic kind of just gives more contrast, kind of gives a little outline to the saddles or the, the blotches. Um, it's hard to see unless it's, it's super form, though. But yeah, got her. We also got, since we have a lemon ghost male who's been by himself, we've been trying to find a female for him. We ended up getting a lemon ghost female. She's possibly had albino, so we're not gonna bank on it. We were just interested in her because she's lemon ghost, really. But yeah, we've got this beautiful lemon ghost girl. Hard to see in the light and especially on camera. Oh, you can see it. Oh, you can? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So yeah, lemon ghost is a line bred trait. It's not like a genetic dominant or recessive. So you do have to breed this with another lemon ghost and that will increase your odds of getting lemon ghosts. But but it's still kind of a selective breeding project. And the third hognose we got is this girl. We got a sable het albino girl. She is beautiful. Oh, oh she was, is that a feeding response? I think it is. That wouldn't surprise me. Wow, yeah, she was pushing up against me. Okay, don't eat me. Oh, whoa. No, we're not eating right now. Okay. All right, well, she knows she wants to eat. Oh, oh. geez. Yeah, Um. that's a, a really good feeding response yeah. here. All right. Oh. Well, okay. Did she get you? She's trying. Okay, <laughs> girl. Oh, jeez. Look at that little mouth. There, just have something to pacify yourself. All right, so this is a sable <laughs> hog nose. And well, we'll see if Emily has a reaction to this on the I way guess. home from Tinley. Yeah, this might not be the end of the video. It might not be. She's so little. Well, she has a good feeding response. Yes, she does. That's great. And this sable was actually purchased for us by a fan overseas named Xanthi. They are a big fan of the channel and they wanted a way to, to support us. And they they felt so bad that we lost our female Sable and they asked if they could in a way buy us a new one. So this is sponsored, I guess, or provided to us by Xanthi overseas. And since she, would you quit chowing she's good, down? She's got a good feeding response. She is that. a great, okay, she's gonna be a good eater. Yeah. And I asked Xanthi if she wanted to name this hog nose because she bought it for us. Uh, and she wants to name her Rosie after her mom, Rosie, Aww. who passed away. So this snake is a snake discovery family member named after Rosie or um, Rosemary was her name. Um, so welcome to the family. I wonder Rosie. if Rosie, Grandma Rosie, was a good eater too. I wonder if she was. <laughs> if she was, then this Rosie is really continuing her legacy. Yeah. Right, how are you gonna get her off? Well, with hog noses, you usually just like push up on the rostral scale. Oh, really? Let's see if this works. Yeah. It's been a while since I've been bit by a hog nose. Yeah, I usually just push up right here. Ta-da! Oh, nice. Yeah, that's the trick to get a hog nose to let go. By the way. So would you, you can quit trying to eat me. You she can, tried to bite you. Did she again? Yeah, she like, really? as soon as you got her off, she, she, like, she like turned around to try and get your finger again. See, this is why we go with JMG's hog noses. That's true. Because <laughs> they're always good eaters. Not usually this good of eaters. Look at that face. She's like, I will eat you give again. Me, give me the food. I want your I, thumb. I am so hungry. There's food to be had. That was a big meal I was gonna eat. I could have taken it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so thank you, Xanthi, so much for adding this sable hog nose to our collection. We are very excited, and you'll get to watch her grow, too. Exactly. Yeah, hey. she got me good. Yes, she did. Yep, awesome. We're gonna well, see how that turns out. Yeah, we can see. <laughs> and the last pickup, which we had prearranged for this show, is a female blue tree monitor. Look at this girl. She's a little squirmy. She's not bitey though, just a little squirmy. A little so squirmy at first. Yeah, yeah. Which is convenient because our guy is squirmy. Yeah, that's true. So this girl being squirmy, we're, we're already used to it. Yeah. So this girl, we are going to- <laughs> So done. <laughs> yeah, she's just done with the weekend. She's had a long couple of days, but this girl, oh, we are going to introduce to our male in the zoo. And hopefully we were talking to a tree monitor breeder at the show. I think we have a pretty good plan to set them up as a breeding pair. Yeah. Granted, it's gonna be up to them if they want to do that, but we have a lot of new tricks and tips up our sleeves now. And I think we really can get these guys set up for breeding. She does have a little bit of nose rub on her, the tip of her nose, yep. but she's going on big enclosures, so, so 
she wouldn't rub anymore. Yeah, yeah. So, so that'll fix itself. Yeah, I think she'll be just fine. So she's a beautiful animal. And yeah, this is the only one that we had prearranged for the show. And I'm so glad that we did. So yeah, that is everything we are going home with from this show. Well, I mean, there's, there's one more, but, well, two more. Oh yeah, there is something else, but too. But they don't get to see that in this That's video. That's for a different video. Yeah, so you'll have to see what else we came home with by um, watching another video that's coming out soon. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to everybody who met us at the show and to those who dressed as Ed or Emily. That was that was kind of fun, um, just seeing how you interpreted that challenge. Thank you, Patreon backers, for your generous support. Thank you, Xanthi, for for the sable hognose. That was so nice of you. And just thank you everybody for all of your support. Yep. So we do need a name for this sweet girl too. We, we do right, need right. a name. We oh. need a name for you. Oh, offended. Don't touch me. How much further back can you leave? <laughs> Jeez. All right. Thanks guys. And we'll see you next time.